and welcome back to Home in the Earth. This epic marathon segment is about stuccoing the second phase of our earth sheltered house. This is the long version. For the short version, click up in the top right corner. We started with this mortar sprayer as we've done in the basement. The walls were rough and we didn't think we could really get the stucco to stay up any other way. It works and you get the stucco up really quickly, but it's noisy with the compressor running and it's tiring because you gotta hold that thing up. And even after it gets the mortar on the walls, you still have to go over it again with a trowel anyway to spread things out. In case it isn't obvious, these videos are definitely not a how-to. They're just showing how I did it. We had to learn as we went along and we had to do everything in small batches on curvy walls, etc. I watched videos before and since, and I know in theory the right way with a rubber float and all that stuff, but this is how we did it. Then we shifted focus for a few months and we buried the bedrooms, that's another video. And now it's December and the weather is too cold to work outside, but the earth sheltered bedrooms are somewhat moderate, so it's time to get back inside to stucco. When they buried the place, we had them dump some sand down the skylights to use for filling the floor in and for making stucco. We would take five buckets of this really nice sand and mix them with a bag of Portland cement and one third of a bag of lime to make our own scratch coat stucco mix. Then we'd use the rake to mix it and the tarp to flip it. This would make about seven or eight buckets worth of mix and each bucket was just the right size to mix in a wheelbarrow. From the wheelbarrow, we could scoop and shoot with that mortar sprayer. After shooting the ceiling, we would need to take that pool float and spread it out nicely. But the next thing I knew, I was just bringing the mud up on a hawk and just troweling it on the wall directly. And it was actually working. But I kept going with the mortar sprayer anyway. You can see me going around and around this cycle. Mortar sprayer for a moment to put up the mud, and then using that pool float to spread it out. Mud from the mortar sprayer kept dropping off and giving me more opportunity to practice with that trowel. And with each cycle, I'm starting to like that trowel more and starting to wonder why I'm using the mortar sprayer at all. This is another day after that first layer dried out. The roof was really quilted before, like, like dented in like as if I was sewing it like a quilt. And this first layer of stucco really reduced that quilted effect a lot, but here I am still filling in the worst spots. Again, liking that trowel for its precision. Now I'm starting to get ahead and only filling the deepest grooves first. I figured that maybe if these deep grooves are filled in first, when I come back with a mortar sprayer, I'll have an easier time. After filling in the grooves in the corners, I went back to using the mortar sprayer, briefly. And then that was it. I decided to clean it up and put it away and switch to just using the hand tools. Maybe it was just the noise, but I felt like the hand tools were easier and maybe even faster. Time to mix another batch. The first step in each area is always to hammer in those little tie wires. Break off any lumps, etc. I go around with a mason's hammer. It's a perfect tool for this. Then I spray everything down so the concrete won't suck the moisture out of the stucco too quickly. It causes it to fall off. Here you can see Sherry getting in on the action on the right hand side there. While we're doing this, maybe this is a good time for you to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. Again, starting by filling in the deep spots first. Let's slow it down and I'll show you what I'm dealing with with those deep spots. I'd already filled in most of these corners, so I decided to film this particular one. In these corners, there are multiple layers of lath and a layer of screen between them. Just the way that we built this up when we were, when we were setting this up. That video is up in the top right corner. The screen in between stopped the shotcrete and it ended up leaving some voids. I know these things are hard to see on film, but you get a bit of an idea when you see through the lath to me working on the other side. In the worst spots, there are several inches of gap between these layers that would need to be filled. When filling that large of a gap, you just take your time and pack it in until you can't get any more to pack in. It felt like I was doing a ferro cement house. Actually, now that I'm much better at this, it's painful to watch myself being so clunky with those tools early in my development. But it worked. We packed these segments full of stucco and made them look pretty good.
back to high speed. Now let's slow down and talk about the improved mix. Now that I had dumped that mortar sprayer, I could add some thin set to my mix. We tried a bunch of things, but we settled on about one quart per bucket, and that seemed to work well. It makes a nice thick mix that slips off the trowel for easy working, but sticks to the wall very well. As a bonus, I'd heard from a pond building professional guy that adding thin set is basically like adding the same additives that make hydraulic cement waterproof. It's probably a mild version of that, but I like the idea anyway. Back to high speed, and I decided to add these hard corners like the pros had done in our garage. They're basically thin strips of wood that give me a sharp line and then can be removed later. There'll be a slowdown to better explain that later. Oh, in this scene, in a triumph of hope over experience, I'm trying that mortar sprayer again. But this time with that sticky thin set mix. It was a disaster, it just gummed up. And I was back to the trial. Do not try the thin set mixer with a mortar sprayer. Here is some video of how those hard corners work. The shotcrete edges in this area were really rough but I could fill them in nicely behind these wood strips and get nice sharp lines. Don't even think about how we tried to film this. <laughs> I was going to take off those wood strips, but in the end I think I just left them in place. Here David's mixing up the next batch for me. He got experience doing this earlier in the year with the outside of those skylight curbs. Again, that's another video. And that's how it went for a while. I'd go out with Sherry, we'd mix up a batch of scratch stucco and put up about seven wheelbarrows worth in an evening, which works out to about 700 pounds between us. We just got faster and faster and better and better at it. Now here's a brief distraction to burn some junk wood. I actually found these inside corners to be the most tricky, even worse than those directly overhead bits. I 
On this particular Saturday, with Brody mixing and Sherry and I putting up the mud, we hit 17 wheelbarrows. That's getting close to a literal ton of stucco. The cost was dirt, so that's free. And then about $7 worth of concrete and about $12 worth of thin set. So for less than 20 bucks. The professional estimate that we got was about $10 per square foot of wall. Now that was for both the scratch and the brown coats. This is just the scratch, but still. So each week I'd guesstimate the number of square feet per day and I would tell Sherry how many hundreds or thousands even of dollars we'd saved that day while we were out there. Plus, we didn't need to spend any money on a gym membership. At this point in my apprenticeship, or skill development or whatever, you can see that I've dropped that hawk. And I was just using a trowel and a pool float. I preferred this combination, especially for the upside down stuff, because I could carry it up with the float, spoon it onto the roof with a trowel, or the float, and then spread it out with the float, both hands working on, on spreading. I could also use the tools to clean each other off and keep everything moving nicely. Finally, we're getting to the master bedroom, just as we're getting decent at this. And we actually saved this for last because we knew we would have better skills by then.
Actually, it was fairly nice and quiet in there, so Sherry and I got in some good chat time that winter. We started actually pretending they were dates, and uh, we made a joke that we put stucco on each other's noses like it was whipped cream. Quick video for the family. <laughs> Now we're really getting near the end of the scratch coat. The last wall of the last room. Well, this video is long enough. Let's save the brown coat for another video. Uh, go take a break. Say hello to your friends and family. The next segment will be the brown coat stucco over these walls. We found that a lot harder to get right, and you'll see what we did.